Music for All is proud to sponsor Bandstand. At Music for All, we're about providing positively life-changing experiences. Join us with your marching band at Bands of America or with your concert ensemble at the Music for All National Festival. Students can audition for our honor ensembles or attend camp at the Music for All Summer Symposium, featuring the Sweetwater Director Academy, an amazing week of professional development for directors led by Dr. Nola Jones. Learn more at musicforall.org. Romeo Music is the leader in audio, video, music, and lighting technology for educators. With a combined nearly 200 years of experience, Romeo Music's subject matter experts understand the struggles that face teachers in today's music classrooms. With a laser focus on educational technology, Romeo Music provides a turnkey solution. Everything from audio cables to on-site training. To learn more, visit www.romeomusic.net. Hello, and welcome to Bandstand, the official podcast of the Tennessee Bandmasters Association. I'm your host, David Adelit, and I hope you'll join us on a journey through the past, present, and future of bands in Tennessee. We'll delve into the rich history of Tennessee bands, uncovering the hidden gems and legendary figures who shaped the state's band landscape. We'll survey the present, where you'll meet the movers and shakers of today, gaining insights from their expertise and experiences. And we'll gaze towards the future, exploring the exciting possibilities that await Tennessee's school bands. Okay, Bandstand listeners, we have one of our sponsors on the podcast today. We have uh, Jody Underwood from Romeo Music. Jody is a senior account manager. And we're going to talk today about uh, music technology in the classroom. And I've already told Jody that, and those of you that know me, I am the least qualified person probably in Tennessee to have this conversation. So <laughs> expect Jody to be a, the main speaker <laughs> in this podcast. So Jody, welcome to Bandstand. Thank you, David. It's really good to be here. Um, and, you know, I, I, I love that because honestly, I'll just start straight away and telling you that in I've done, I've been a professional in the working field for 23 years, uh, almost 24. And all of that has been both in music technology and working with educators. So mm -hmm. uh, if there is a group of people that I've worked with that have been hesitant regarding technology, it's been, it's been teachers <laughs> and it's been a wide range of teachers uh, going back to early trainings uh, back when PCs were still big PCs and big CRT monitors and wow. <clears throat> all that and, and telling teachers, okay, uh, go to your desktop and they're literally looking at their desk. <laughs> I've got my pencil sharpener yes. here. Yeah. What, what am I looking for exactly? What a, so I've, I, yeah, I have, I have seen it all. And, um, and, and that's part of what I love about, about what we do at Romeo music. Um, you know, we, we don't, we do sell onesie twosie items. So you can come to me and you can get a, a, a bass amplifier for your jazz band or a powered speaker for your classroom to plug a microphone into or some software. Um, you can get that a lot of places. Um, but at Romeo music, you know, being specifically education based, um, it's our only customer, uh, education and our institution. So we work a lot with churches as well. Um, you know, we do the integration, so it's mm -hmm. not just, I can, I can tell you what the best speaker, what the best microphone is to save your voice in the classroom. Um, because I've seen that, but I can also install it for you and then train you on how to use it. So that's really kind of where we set ourselves apart from all the other online retailers. Um, and having me right here in middle Tennessee makes it even more of a bonus. Well, maybe not for everyone, but <laughs> I'm here and I can come out anytime someone wants me to and do quite frequently. Well, well that seems to make a lot of sense because then you help to onboard everybody to the technology, right? So you can personalize it to them and help them get accustomed to it. Correct. Yes. So in the past, we can do an overview training and if someone is, is really familiar, you know, they just kind of want to know the, 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 you know, down and dirty basics uh, of a new piece of gear, perhaps to them uh, take Belmont university, for instance, um, it's my alma mater. And 
I've worked with Keith Mason over there in the commercial music technology department on many different things. And more recently, they opened their new uh, music technology two labs over there uh, two years ago. Um, one of them being a brand new music technology lab, another one being a um, piano lab. Mm -hmm. And they needed an hour's worth of training because they've used this stuff before. Yeah. Um, but there's instances too, where I've had, um, I've had teachers just completely complete novices that have asked for, um, a day of training. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in that kind of, in that case, I'll usually hire a, a music technology teacher, someone who has been in the classroom using the similar technology because it, it's more simpatico that way. It's like, I can't particularly speak to the ins and outs, the day to day of what goes on in a classroom, but another teacher talking to another teacher makes more sense. And that's been a really good experience um, over the years doing something like that. That's cool. That's good. <clears throat> Ease of onboarding. What is your background, Jody? So um, raised in, um, spent part of my life in South Florida, a little bit in Wichita, Kansas, and then back to South Florida. And then um, got out of high school, went straight to Trevecca, a Nazarene University here, and spent two years there. Uh, and then realized that Belmont was right across the way, had no idea. It's funny, a buddy of mine uh, at Trevecca with me said, hey, my girlfriend's at Belmont. Let's go over there and see a recital. And I, I just went along, had no idea what Belmont even was. Went over there and we're sitting there and I actually looked at him. I said, are all those students in the, in the band, are those students playing those? He's like, yeah. And it was like some pop tune. And I said, I'll be right back. And I literally got up and I went and got an admissions packet. <laughs> and my, my Nazarene pastor family did not understand why I was transferring to a, well then Baptist school yeah. kind of still is, I guess. Um, did not understand. I was, I was foregoing, uh, discounts at Trevecca for being a preacher's kid for touring in some of the groups that I was touring in there over the summer. Um, but I just knew that the education I wanted was at Belmont. Yeah. And I'm glad because at graduation, I was actually in my cap and gown walking to my truck. Keith Mason, who was my mentor and advisor and still there, he came up to me and kind of pulled on my gown and said, hey, I've got a great job opportunity for you. I was busy. I was going to go back to Princeton's Grill and Green Hills, waiting tables. And I was actually working in the mailroom at SunTrust uh, during the day. So I had no plans. And he said, I got a great job. It's for the company that just did the piano lab in, in the music building. And that company was called Soundtree, um, the educational Soundtree. division. Yep, yeah. the educational division of Korg. And so I did initial interviews. And it was really funny because I'd never really, it was for a sales job. And I'm straight out of music school. Mm -hmm. And I remember the vice president of sales and marketing, Joe Bredo, asked me, uh, he said, so what do you know about sales? And I said, well, I said, I know that I could upgrade you, upsell you from a sirloin to a filet. <laughs> but other than that, that's about the extent of it. And it actually it resonated with him. It made him laugh. Yeah. Um, and so 30 days went by. They had actually, I found out they had actually called someone else in and that guy showed up with like. Uh, shorts and a t-shirt. And when I went out for my interview, I showed up, I went in, I bought a suit. I got brand new shoes. I mean, I looked the part yeah. and, uh, ended up getting, getting the job and was there for 11 years until they decided to kind of dissolve that end of the business. Um, to which I called Julie Romeo at Romeo music. And I knew that Romeo, they were always a competitor of mine trying to get into Texas. And I called and I said, Hey, uh, would you maybe want to hire me? And she said, absolutely. And that was almost 13 years ago. There you go. So I have my degree at Belmont was commercial keyboard performance with a music technology emphasis. So I was always into desktop music production, um, at Trevecca, my first year at Trevecca, my, one of my suite mates walked past my room and saw my little Yamaha PSR keyboard. And he said, Hey, do you know I can hook that to my computer and we can record? This was 96. Mm -hmm. And I went, I don't even know what you're talking about. Because at the time, I'd do all my little recordings on the keyboard and then record them out to a cassette boombox and then sing along with it. I didn't even have a four track. I had nothing. And so we used a MIDI translator cable, which was the printer cable on one end, the SCSI 
port printer cable and then split out to MIDI cables on the other end and went into his computer and he had a Roland sound canvas with Cakewalk Pro Audio and just started making music all the time to the point. Was that like when you upgrade from the eight crayons to the 64 crayon box? <laughs> Buddy, it was, it was with the sharpener. Yes, with the with sharpener. The sharpener. Yes, the sharpener was the, the fine detail. That was the trick for me is he, when we'd record, he would say, okay, now whatever you do, don't stop playing. We can fix it. And I would, the first couple of times I'd be playing, I'd mess up and go, oh, and he just, he'd get so mad. He'd be like, we can fix it. And then I learned going back through that you can look at the notes and I can, oh, that should be a G sharp and I can just move it up. Yeah. I have step with a mouse. It was, it was mind blowing. It, it felt like cheating at the time, which now AI, I mean, let's talk about <laughs> cheating. Right. Um, but at the time it was, it was crazy to me to be able to do that. So uh, we ended up, we started, we had an SM58 microphone with an eighth inch plug on the other end that he would plug into his sound card and we would record that way. And one of the other guys in our suite, um, actually Wes Hampton's dad, Wes is now, uh, he's been the tenor in the Gaither vocal band for 21 years. Um, Wes's dad came to visit, saw what we were doing and said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Took us all down to Music Man on Nolansville Road and bought us an ADAT. <laughs> we had a digital multi-track recording studio in our dorm. Treveca did not even have that. Wow. They had tape and they had an old Mackie mixer sitting there. So we did egg crate around the room. So we created our own vocal booth. We moved all, all the beds into one room. We slept in one room. We recorded in the other. And so that was my introduction to recording. And I, I was bit, you know, yeah. being able to sit behind the computer with a keyboard and just start farming out songs left and right. Um, so I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I found out Belmont had that. That, that was it for me. So being able to go from there to Belmont, then to Korg, and now at Korg, the mantra at Korg was put as many Korg keyboards in kids' hands as possible. And so the only goal of Soundtree from the inception was piano lab, piano lab, keyboard lab, yeah. music tech lab. And so that's what I did for 11 years and still do. But that makes you super qualified to do your job now. Because you've got the personal skills that you've gained through the years, but also like you've lived that life and you've been on the sort of leading edge of this technology as it uh, sort of comes to you. Correct. So, you know, that's, that's a, that's incredible for you to be able to relate to teachers. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I think so. I mean, and that's, again, I, I say it to teachers all the time. Um, they've been my only customer ever. Um, so, you know, I, I can't really speak to what goes on in a major recording studio. I know what they're doing, but I don't know the challenges they face. I know the challenges of a teacher that has a very limited amount of time with students during a given, uh, day and what they think they need to accomplish. So, uh, yes, it's, it's been, it's been special. Um, and it continues to be, I mean, like I said, 20, 21 years, um, uh, 23 years of doing exactly that. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, I still love it. Tell us about Romeo music. Romeo is, is Texas based. I think you said that a minute ago. Romeo music's been around since, um, 2006 is when she incorporated. So Julie Romeo and a couple of our, uh, my other colleagues were with a company called Brooke Mays for years. Julio has a piano degree. Uh, Ju Julio, <laughs> Julie yeah. has a piano degree from Northwestern. Um, and, uh, ended up in Dallas working for Brooke Mays and <clears throat> Brooke Mays, if you'll recall, went through a bit of an issue where, um, if I remember correctly, there were some letters sent to, uh, band parents, um, kind of denigrating first act instruments when first act first came out and first act sued them <laughs> and won. And that was the end of Brooke Mays for a minute. So at the time, Julie was like, well, I've got to find something to do. And her husband was like, start your own company. And so literally out of her garage, it's the Amazon story, mm -hmm. out of her garage, um, she and a couple of the other uh, ladies from Brooke Mays, they just started calling their customers saying, hey, I'm, I'm still here. I can still help. And she got, you know, got set up with Yamaha and Roland uh, to our two really biggest um, piano companies that we work with and was literally ship ships. Things were coming into her garage oh, wow. being 
prepped and then taken back out to a school for install. Um, so now we have huge warehouse space. Um, I think there's 15 on staff, um, sales, um, warehouse support, marketing, um, and uh, uh, two piano uh, store showrooms, Roland piano showrooms. But the main thing is that Romeo has always been just education only. Um, yes, typically well known in Texas. It's always an uphill battle for me. People are like where what's Romeo or they don't recognize it. Yeah. I mean, at TMEA, you know, we've got 10 booth spaces at FMEA or TMEA. I've got one, maybe two. Um, but so it's always been an uphill battle for me. Um, the word of mouth is really special for me. It's what, uh, and, and referrals, but yeah, Texas based really, I mean, the biggest, a provider of audio visual, visual services, whether it's marching band, auditorium, lights, and video. Uh, just recently completed all six Pasadena ISD high school auditoriums, complete oh, wow. with new sound, new lights, new video. Major project. Very, very grateful to have the, um, the opportunity to do that. So, but yeah, primarily Texas based, uh, long way around to answer your question. Yeah. So we have listeners from lots of different kinds of band programs, you know, uh, rural, urban, small, large. Uh, tell us what Romeo can do for that wide range of schools. Well, what I always start with when I'm talking to a school is what's your comfort level? Um, if you're not terribly comfortable behind a mixing board, then let's try to mitigate how frequently you have to be behind one or what kind of uh, device we look at for you. Um, what are your concepts is another question that I always try to ask because if I'm not honing in on exactly what you want, and sure, there are companies out there that will say, yeah, you need this, this, and this, and, and here you go, Bob's your uncle. For me, that's more frustrating because in the end, you're just going to go, what's all this stuff? Why did Jody give me this stuff? I don't need this stuff. So when I'm working with programs, my, my initial questions are, what can I help you accomplish? What's your concept? What's your comfort level? Uh, and then we just go from there. So there's, it's a really wide range. Oh, and also budget. That's important too. Yeah. And some people are hesitant. I, and I get it. I mean, if you're having someone paint your house, you know, they're going to say, what's your budget? Well, you're going to aim low and that's fine. I get it. I've done that myself. Um, but the end goal here is for me to give you the best products under your budget or at your budget that we can, that's going to accomplish the goals that you're uh, setting out for yourself. Um, so band program wise, you know, I get, I get lots of different calls are all over the spectrum. Um, recently, I guess I'm more of a high end level. Uh, James Young from Peabody High School called me a week and a half before state. Mm -hmm. He said, one of my channels is dropping on my mixer. I need I need a new mixer. And we did a little troubleshooting. And I was like, you know, he actually he asked me, would you feel comfortable if it's only one channel going to state? To which I said, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> but don't hold me to that. <laughs> In the end, I was able to get him a, a brand new Allen and Heath uh, 32 channel mixer and six new channels of wireless delivered three days before state. Now, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> new products that close to a competition, but by the hair of your shinny chin chin, buddy, I'm telling you, <laughs> I kept thinking, ah, this is, but you know what? Some and like we there's just, there's a comfort level. He's yeah. comfortable with that, and and I was happy to to be able to provide that, um, and it worked out for them. It, it did work out. Yep. It did work out. Um, so in the end, all, all is well. But there, there's such a wide range of products right now. And one of the things we do a lot of in band programs, I'll get, I'll get the call. We need to. We can't hear the metronome. So Long Ranger is gone. Rest in peace. Um, but there's lots of different products that can fill that void. Sure, there's there's the best unlimited budget one called Sound Projections. Uh, and the sound projections voice machine is the tippy top best product you can get um, for battery life, for durability. It's got the best warranty, um, but it's expensive. 
Um, and then kind of under that would be any number of products from Anchor. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, sometimes I've, I've done a Samson. Samson has some nice uh, portable speakers that work well for car line or you could use them for um, uh you know, the cheer, they can, they can pull it out and work on, you know, Bluetooth their phone to it and, and get their song for, for competition, whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of different options. Um, I get the main stage question a lot. Uh, should we go to main stage, which main stage for those who don't know is a, a Mac based program, an Apple based program that allows you to set up uh, multiple scenes of synthesizers and sound effects that you then control with your MIDI keyboard um, or some other type of controlling device. Um, and that's great for the right program, for the right director. And sometimes a 61 key synthesizer that you push one button and there's your bell, you push another yeah. button and there's your dog barking. Very easy to use, very easy to, to wheel out, set up and go. Sometimes that's a better solution and it's actually, you know, can be more, uh, less expensive that way as well. Yeah. What about things specifically for the, for the band room? For the band room, especially we do, we do a lot of different things. Like I'm working on, um, I'm working on some dance rooms in Orlando right now where they want two speakers front and two speakers back. Um, I know a lot of band rooms do that and we're probably 50, 50 on, on those, um, for a number of band rooms, two good sized speakers up front. Um, uh, did Siegel High School a few years ago when Alex White was there. Um, he had the speakers. Uh, so I just, I used the cable and the speakers that was there. We upgraded his amplifier, put a nice wall mounted rack on the wall with amplifier, Bluetooth um, receiver. And a lot of schools these days will go with a headset microphone. Um, doesn't have to be expensive, but a head wireless headset microphone will save your voice. Yeah. Um, and I'm getting more and more teachers, uh, coming to me saying I'm losing my voice at the end of every day, which we all know that's, that's terrible. That's not the way it should be. Um, so we have very inexpensive solutions. Samson makes a little guy called, um, the airline micro and it's USB rechargeable and you can use it all eight hours of the day just a little headset microphone that goes into any speaker uh, that you have in your classroom. And so for 300 bucks, you know, you can be saving your voice. So little simple solutions like that, that you wouldn't necessarily think are are quite um, as inexpensive as they are, are available. Uh, More and more band directors are using the Yamaha Harmony Director Mm -hmm. and you have products that interface well with that. Absolutely. Yes, sir. We you sell a ton of Harmony Directors. HD 300 is the latest one. Um, it's super cool with its Bluetooth uh, Bluetooth uh, capability. So it's got a Bluetooth control app that you can use with it that kind of uh, is a little tonal energy-esque, I, I could say. Um, the immediate touch point of the Harmony Director and just being able to put your hands on it right there. Did you use it a lot when yes. you were teaching? I started yeah. using it in 2011. Okay. Yeah. So those that know it can't live without it. Those that don't know it usually need someone like you to go, you have to get that. And it's $300 cheaper than it's ever been for the new model. It's right. crazy. That's you know, everybody's like, what? It's amazing. More full, full featured. And we usually just either um, go out. If, if the school has a sound system already in the room, we'll provide the right cables to go out to that. Um, some teachers want it to be wireless. Um, some teachers want it to just go to a little speaker that's sitting right beside them. So again, uh, situation dependent, but we have the solution. Good. What about band directors that have to teach general music, uh, or maybe want to have a piano lab or some sort of even music composition component to their curriculum? So there's lots of things that can be done. It, it, one of the first questions I'll ask in that scenario is, are the kids one-to-one in any way? Do they have iPads? Do they have tablets? Do they have Chromebooks? And if that's the case, uh, the next question is, is there a space in your room or are, are there tables somewhere where they could set up a small keyboard? And it doesn't have to be you know, a full-size 88 key piano in order to teach how to play basic chords. Um, so 
there's really inexpensive things. Um, Nectar makes uh, MIDI keyboards, 25 keys for 59, 60 bucks. Mm. And that just goes USB into whatever device. And I mean, throw a rock and hit an app that'll right. give you a piano keyboard on screen. Or um, I will speak to elementary and middle school. Uh, there is a program that we are representing called Keys and Kingdoms. And it is the first adventure role playing game that teaches piano. And kids love it. It's uh, designed by uh, um, Blizzard who also did Guitar Hero. Um, so same team behind at Blizzard Activision worked on this. Um, it will take kids everywhere from just basic uh, one, two, three, playing all the way up to two hands. Um, but it's based on an adventure role-playing game, and it's uh, it responds to kids. So the whole first act of the game, it's figuring out where the student is. If I've mm -hmm. taken piano for two years, I don't need to start at the beginning of the game. Smart. So it's assessing them. It also has uh, progress reporting um, built into it. It's also got this really cool mood feature where it's as the kids are playing and interacting with the game, it's judging their mood and it's tailoring the music to how they're feeling. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, in today's in today's society, in today's classrooms, it's that's super important to meet the kids where they're at on every level. So Keys and Kingdoms is is super cool and you can get it in multiple site licenses. If the school has a computer lab, one of the easiest things I've always pitched to teachers is see if there's some time where you could get in there. Yeah. Let's talk to the IT folks if we can get a piece of software loaded. The kids can walk in, they can grab a MIDI controller off of a shelf plug it in, put some headphones on, and instant computer lab right then and there. So there's that option, but then there's also the, hey, I've got an empty room the principal's giving me. How many keyboards and computers can I put in it? And what I'll do is I'll either I'll come out or you can send me dimensions and pictures, and I can do a room drawing and say, hey, we can get 15 piano stations in this room. How do you want it to lay out? Do you want them all facing one direction? Are you getting a whiteboard? Do you want me to provide a projector and a screen? So many questions go into it, but it's always an exciting step when a teacher says, I've got a room. Yeah. More and more audition situations are happening online now and less in person. If a, if a band director wants to dedicate like maybe a room in there, like a practice room for recording for individuals, for, for seniors who are applying for scholarships or auditioning for national honor bands and things, what kind of things can you do for them? Just a couple of things. Uh, very simply, um, a, a handheld recorder. Um, and again, the Roland R7, I mean, Roland, the R9 was around forever. Um, then it became the R5. Now the R7 is out. But I, I honestly would steer as far away from uh, devices, phones and iPads as possible. Um, there are really interesting devices like the Shure. Uh, Shure makes the MV88, which is a, a lightning or USB adapted microphone yeah. that has a fantastic app. That's a very simple solution. Um, a, you know, a simple, another fairly simple solution would be an iMac or some type of computer. I do a lot of one computer classrooms in say a practice room where they'll have either they'll have the piano in there or they'll pull that out and they'll put a small desk. We can do a little desk in there with a little mini recording studio, a couple monitor speakers, um, a, a boom a stand with a microphone on it, good high quality microphone. Um, doesn't have to be expensive. Doesn't have to be flashy. I think the end resort is just is just a good microphone and a good audio interface into the computer that's going to give you the best recording for the students. No doubt. Okay, so kids break stuff. So <laughs> what is tell me about Romeo and replacement and repair and that sort of thing. So all of our all of our replacement repair is just goes along with uh, the manufacturers and I will say I will say that's why we're very specific on who we work with. Yes, we I can get you anything, but I also know the companies that are the best with support and the best with supporting teachers. So not every company that manufactures equipment understands education. Uh, companies like Mackey, Shure, uh, Allen & Heath, Yamaha, Roland, they, they get what we do and support us accordingly. Um, 
I just to be honest, I recently sold a piece of Mackie equipment of my own. And the gentleman who purchased it knew that there was an issue with it when I sold it to him. And I had been watching emails go back and forth between him and Mackie support. Mm -hmm. I didn't, they didn't get anything from it. It's been long sold by the time it got to this gentleman who bought it, but they're still, they're still helping support, which goes a long way, especially with teachers who, Hey, you know, Johnny threw the Mackie mixer against the wall. Well, in that case, probably need to just buy a new one. Um, piano labs, especially uh, headphones break. They break quickly. They get the most use. They get the most abuse. Um, but Koss has, uh, when we do Roland or Korg labs uh, or even Yamaha, they all come with their own headphones. But down the line, we can swap them to Koss, which Koss has a, a $20 replacement. It doesn't matter if the kid breaks it in half. You put it in a box, $20 check, send it to Koss, they send you a brand new one. Hmm. That's the kind of stuff that you you learn over time of doing lots of different labs over the yeah. course of, uh, of how long we've done them. Yeah, I appreciate that you curate sort of that experience for teachers too with those vendors. For sure. Um, what are some things you're noticing, like maybe some trends that you're noticing in music ed right now? Um, one of the things that we're doing a lot of, and it's actually being requested is podcasting, which is kind of funny is we're sitting here doing this, <laughs> um, uh, between the road post podcaster and the task cam unit, um, schools can get in to a four station podcasting setup for $1,500 or less. Um, something that records directly to a card and has sound effects built in. I mean, you know, so yeah. it's it, it's that's something that we're seeing uh, more and more. Um, esports is another one that we've recently gotten into. Um, I did our first esports lab a couple years ago uh, here in Metro Nashville at Glencliff Elementary yeah. um, with uh, the Nintendo Switch. It's one of the interesting things I will mention too. Is there's there's a time or two where we just don't carry something. Um, but that doesn't mean I can't get a hold of it. Um, one of those being Metro Nashville buying nine of the spinning photo booths. If you've seen those where you stand in the middle and the camera spins around the outside and takes a 360 video, um, mm. they use it for parent night. They use it for, um, uh, any other engagements that they're having on campus. They, the teachers or principals can rent them out or borrow them from the district. So between that and Nintendo Switches, um, we got a lot of stuff that we can do. <laughs> that's cool. I'll tell you, one of the other really cool things that's happening right now are DJ and, and electronic music, music setups. And we're doing a lot with uh, a, what's called Start to DJ, and it's distributed by Hal Leonard. And it's with a gentleman by the name of DJ Hoppe, who has been around for years. He was Michael Jordan's uh, personal DJ for two years. But Heart for Education and a, and a program that allows uh, certification and from the get-go can empower anyone, not just the teacher, not just the students. But we've got principals that have gone through the program. Oh, wow. Because guess what? When it's time for the student dance he doesn't have to hire a DJ. Yeah. He can do it. And the kids get well, to get up. That's funny. And it's, it is funny. <laughs> They're like, all of a sudden the principal's kind of cool because he's up there spinning Sabrina Carpenter, you know? So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very cool, but we're seeing, we're seeing that growth uh, exponentially both in education, but also in public libraries. Uh, we're starting to do a lot with public libraries because kids are, are going there um, in Houston We've got two projects we're working on. One we just wrapped uh, a year and a half ago, was a recording studio. I mean, two rooms. So 32 channel mixer. And then the next room over is I did a, a Pearl drum set, a um, couple of uh, Jackson guitars, a Yamaha keyboard, slew of microphones. And then the other side of the building is podcast and video studios. Hmm. So no, nothing is really out of the uh, out of the ordinary for us anymore at this point. Hmm. What are some things that you're hearing from directors when you speak to, when you speak to them? Uh, that they need to upgrade their gear. <laughs> um, hearing a lot of that, a lot of, a lot of the old Yamaha club series speakers are on their last legs. Um, they're asking, you know, do we go, uh, you know, what's, uh, here's one good one. What's with the constant curvature array? 
yeah. that something like the PreSonus CDL is offering. Um, and again, it's, that's, it's a loaded question. I will say that that particular model of a RAID speaker is meant for a very different application than marching band. Um, the point source boxes, which is the single cabinet we're used to, where everything comes from one point, um, those are still the best way to go. They're still the best for uh, clarity. Um, the PreSonus, I'm sorry, the QSC E series, the E110, E112, E115, are still the best bang for your buck um, on the marching field. Um, the CDL, it's a good speaker, but for marching purposes, it doesn't project well. Um, so it's pretty, but some audio hobbyists, um, what's the best way? Some audio ho hobbyists can create norms uh, that are problematic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the things that we're, we're trying to, and, you know, and I've told him, somebody comes to me and says, hey, I really want those speakers. Well, okay, here's, and I, and I have actually said, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what I would recommend. But if this is really what you want, it's, it's yeah. your game. Yeah, those trends happen a lot. Those kind of uh, yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah, like keeping up with the, the Joneses kind of stuff. The Nord, you know? the Nord. We were me and some of the guys at church were talking about that this past weekend. Like the how the Nord just became the model keyboard for everyone out of almost out of out of nowhere. It's like, well, you don't have a red keyboard. Well, why not? Kind of became the thing. It's like, wait, what happened to Yamaha? <laughs> I mean, they were the bell of the ball forever. So it's very interesting how that happens. What's next? In five years, what would this podcast episode be about? What are the emerging emerging technologies? I think AI is going to play a really big role. And I don't think it has to be a bad thing. Um, I've personally used some AI in songwriting. Um and I think it kind of goes back to when loops first came out and teachers said, well, we can't have loops in the classroom. The kids need to learn how to play. Yes, they do. But they also can take a loop that's pre-recorded. A loop is basically a pre-recorded piece of audio that can either be drums or bass or guitars. You know, I could drag in a drum loop and then drag in a bass loop and they can they may not match. And it's up to the teacher to say, hey, you know, there might be a better one there. I've got a 13-year-old that is way into songwriting right now. She's every day, it's, hey, I wrote a new song, and she'll sit at her piano, and she'll make up lyrics, and she'll sing. And some of them is pretty good, and, and there's other times I go, okay, good. Do you think that really makes sense there? Mm -hmm. You know, rather than, rather than just saying, yeah, it's great, good job, move on. It's our job as teachers to to direct them. Otherwise, AI may end up being the teacher, and we don't. nobody wants that. Because that's impersonal. Um, so I think AI is going to end up a lot like everything else does in technology. It'll have its place, but I think there'll also be, there's always going to be room for us. And I hope maybe that's wishful thinking. Um, but I, I hope think so that, too. I've seen all the Terminator <laughs> movies. So yes, no, we, don't, we don't want that. We don't want that. Yes. I think of like iRobot a lot. What happens when they just decide they don't want to? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I think there's cool things there. I think I think wireless is going to wireless, you know, every five, 10 years changes. Um, I think we saw the last five years we were talking about a whole spectrum of wireless going away when T-Mobile bought the 600 megahertz, yeah. which crippled a lot of theater programs at the time. Yep. Um, so hopefully we'll see an expansion of that into more Wi-Fi realm rather than in the UHF realm. I always ask this, and I'm going to ask you too, even though you're not a band director, okay. which probably is a credit to you as a person. <laughs> but what would you say, Jody, to young directors? If, if, if I was a director, basically I'll say what I would say to myself. Take time to breathe. I, I know as I'm working with directors, I know we're coming through – a very busy season, especially for marching. Um, but band directors in general, take time for yourself. And I, I struggle with that personally. I had a conversation with a buddy the other day. I, I said, you know, after I'm done, you know, 
lifting weights, I want to go for a walk, but my son wants to go with me. And I feel bad telling him no. And he was like, look at it this way. When you're on an airplane and the oxygen masks come down, you put yours on first. Because if you don't have your oxygen, you've got nothing left, left to give everyone else. And so I think take the summer, take the time, shut it off when you can. And I know yeah. sometimes you can't, but try to maintain a healthy you so that there's a healthy you to give to your students. That's no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, when I was at Franklin, much to the chagrin of some of the people that I worked with, I, uh, I would take two weeks in the summer that were just, David is out of pocket for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I just, I had to be, whether I was, whether we were on vacation or I was just sitting on my back porch, I just needed that time to decompress completely and to be able to be ready for the next year because it's, it is so draining. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's another podcast too. The whole work-life balance. <laughs> yes. And maybe the, maybe the myth of the work-life balance. Yeah. Uh, that we won't go into that today too much. <laughs> but that, I think that's really wise. And I appreciate you having those words for our younger teachers. Cause I worry about them. I worry that, you know, it, it takes a while to get some traction and to get, and it does with anything, but teaching sure. is a very difficult, uh, profession and it takes a while to sort of get your feet under you before you can right. feel like you're making some progress. And so we've got to keep them in the business long enough that they can get to that point that they feel like they're making a difference. Yeah. And, and to, and it's a, it's almost like a catch 22 because you finally get the momentum and you want to keep the momentum, but at what cost? So yeah. it is it, the balance there is, is difficult, but it's, it's important. Yep. Yeah. It's important. Well, Jody, thank you for coming on Bandstand, and thank you to Romeo Music for sponsoring this podcast. We have some, we have a mobile podcast set up that we we purchased through you guys, and uh, I've used it a couple of times. I'm going to use it a lot more this next spring, and uh, I appreciate what you guys have done for us as a podcast, as a awesome. as a beginning podcast. And thanks for being on. Absolutely, thank you, David. Thanks for listening to Bandstand. Bandstand's mission is to build a stronger, more unified band community in Tennessee by fostering meaningful conversations about the past, present, and future of school bands in our state. If you have topic suggestions or need to get in touch with us, email us at tbabandstandpodcast at gmail.com. Your input is important to us, and if you have a topic you'd like to discuss about the past, present, or future of Tennessee bands, please let us know. Again, that email is tbabandstandpodcast at gmail.com. Right now, we're broadcasting on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts, so please subscribe, review, and rate Box 5, please. And if you find something interesting or helpful, please share this podcast with your friends. Bandstand is proud to be sponsored by Music for All and Romeo Music. See you next week. <laughs>